Have you ever gotten frustrated because you felt like you're in really good shape, but unfortunately you got tired and you slowed down during a race? Is that a fitness issue or is that a fatigue issue? Let me give you a simple test on how you can differentiate on which one it is and more importantly, how to fix it. Hi, I'm Coach Rob. At the time of this recording, I've been a human performance specialist for going on 41 years. And I received an email from one of our viewers and she was very frustrated because she had trained a year for a big 10K race. And it was very important to her, but unfortunately, about halfway through the race, she blew up and went backwards. And she paid for a consultation and we looked at her Garmin heart rate monitor data using the Garmin Connect dashboard. And this is one of the things that we see quite, quite frequently when we pick up a new client is, they don't know what is the appropriate heart rate range that they should compete in given the distance of the race. There's an inverse relationship between volume and intensity. The longer the race, the lower the average heart rate has to be so that way you can get from start to finish without grenading yourself. So when we started sitting down with her, what she didn't have going into it was number one, she didn't have appropriate and up-to-date, maybe not appropriate, but she didn't have accurate heart rate zones. This is extremely important. If you're using the Garmin and you implement a field test, you're able to use the max and the average heart rate. You can plug those into, uh, in our description box below, we have a heart rate spreadsheet. It's free, please feel free to utilize it. You go out and you do a max heart rate assessment, you plug your max heart rate number in, you use the Garmin Connect dashboard, you get your four week resting heart rate average, you plug it in and you've got the appropriate zones, one through five. With our clients, what we teach them is, how fast can you go before you get tired? If the race is a 10K, 6.2 miles, you're not gonna be getting any rewards if you blow yourself up at mile number four. You've got to be able to spread that energy to get from start to finish. Now, this is where I want to always pose the question whenever somebody's frustrated with their results. Is it a fitness issue? So we spent a couple conversations looking at some data. We knew it was not a fitness issue. She's running about 45, 50 miles a week. The race is only 6.2. So not going to get into too many details here just for the sake of the video, but if you're running three, four times the race distance in weekly volume, right? The race is six miles, 6.2 miles, and she's running 40 to 50 miles. It's not a fitness issue. She knows she can run six miles. When we look at the idea, why did she go backwards? Why did she blow up? And this is where we get into heart rate data utilizing the Garmin. We don't want to cross that anaerobic threshold too early in the race. As a human being, you need oxygen. When you cross over that threshold from where oxygen is readily available to where you go into a mode of anaerobic, working without the presence of oxygen, you're on borrowed time. It's not if you're gonna slow down, it's by how much. Now, some people are offended by that, but that's just human physiology. What our goal is, when we work with our clients, is we want them to be an aerobic monster. Huge aerobic capacity and a huge strength base. When you're strong, you're able to go faster. And when you are strong, the secondary muscles kick in and you have better muscular endurance. Well, that's only two of the three pieces. You have to have an aerobic engine to be able to feed the muscles the oxygen that they need. On top of all of that, you have to have the appropriate amount of sugar. You have to have the appropriate amount of electrolytes because the human body can only store so many grams of sugar. The average human holds about 2,000 calories of sugar in the body versus 50,000 calories of fat in the human body. So you wanna teach yourself to be aerobic for as long as you possibly can. So that's why improving your aerobic engine is so incredibly important. Now, when we look at what happened with her in her 10K, what we found was that she went anaerobic right before the four mile mark. She still had 2.2, two miles to, excuse me, she had 2.2 miles still to go, but once she crossed that anaerobic threshold point, she hadn't trained herself. Now think about the word anaerobic threshold. The good news is it can be improved. When we look at lactate tolerance, right? Lactate is a byproduct of converting stored sugar into energy. Well, the good news is the word tolerance means it can be improved. So when we're looking at you getting frustrated because you're not finishing a race strong, 
First thing you have to look at is what's the duration of the race and how do you adjust the intensity, i.e. heart rate, using your Garmin to make sure that you spread your energy out so that you're strong from start to finish. And I'll even put an extra challenge on top of you. What we do with our clients is our goal is to negative split the second half of the race. So like in this case, the last 5K should be faster than the first 5K. Now this is all trained, this is all very specific. You're utilizing heart rate, you're utilizing energy fuel to make sure that you get enough sugar and electrolytes, and you're just spreading that out to make sure that you, now there's a caveat here. I also don't want you to cross the finish line and feel like you could have run for another mile. Then you didn't spread your energy out throughout the entire race. When we zoom out to 10,000 feet and we look at this, this is where it's a fine line between, hey, I'm super fit, all right, what do you know about your fitness? How fast you can go before you get tired? And then you compare that against the characteristics of the race course. If it has a lot of hills, if it's gonna be windy, well, you've gotta factor that in. And, and I can't emphasize this enough, you're a human being. The heart rate dictates everything. And once that heart rate is in that red line zone, you're on borrowed time because the body's gonna to start to shut down because of the excessive amount of lactate and because you don't have enough oxygen to feed the muscles. What compounds the problem is if you become dehydrated, the surface of the cell can carry less oxygen, so that drives the heart rate up. When you're running along, the demands of the muscle, they're pretty consistent, right? You're running at a certain pace, you've got your goal pace, and you're running at that goal pace. Well, as the cells become dehydrated and carry less oxygen, it's gonna artificially drive up the heart rate because the muscles are demanding oxygen. Well, when the heart rate goes up, it just facilitates a higher sweat rate, which means you take your state of dehydration and just compound it. And unfortunately, that becomes the beginning of the end of your race. So I want to come back to the original question. Is it a fitness issue or is it a fatigue issue? And I've had people that have um, asked me about this when I'm out at the races. And fatigue sometimes gets misunderstood. A lot of people think about, oh, I came into the race fatigued because I had a big week at work. That's definitely fatigue. But premature fatigue during the race can really jeopardize your confidence because now all of a sudden you think that you're not fit enough when actually it was more of a strategical error. You didn't know what heart rate zone you could race at for the duration of the race. You didn't put a strategy together. And this is what I'll encourage you to do, same thing we do with our clients, is literally know what your heart rate zones what are your goals? What are you shooting for literally mile by mile? And, and maybe you change it up. I'm not, there, we could do an entire video series on just how to approach a race, but you tell me what you want to accomplish. It's my job to help you put a strategy together. And then we reverse engineer and build the fitness program to make sure that we can implement that strategy, i.e. a negative split. There's a specific way to train for that to make sure that you do it correctly. And that's how we're able to set PRs of almost every race that we do. Because as we always say, success isn't accidental, but it's also not guaranteed. We just need to come into it with a specific strategy that's indigenous to yourself based on you and what you want to accomplish. I can't thank you enough for watching this video. If you're new to the channel, welcome. Thank you so much. Please do me a favor, like, subscribe, and turn on the notifications. Every day here on YouTube, we drop a new video answering your questions. Any frustration that you might be dealing with, something that you want clarification on, send, feel free to put it in the comments below. And if you're not comfortable doing that, feel free to send me an email, contact at coachrob.com. As I said earlier, we'll put out a video every day here on YouTube, and it's my hope that I'll see you again tomorrow. Thank you for your time.